Awesome. Hi everybody, uh, welcome back to Willie's American Guitars, and here we are in the new store. Um, you know, a lot of people collect stuff, uh, and collectible guitars have really been on the rise lately. It's been hard to find collectible guitars, and worldwide, guys are gobbling up old guitars. When you look at like cars, you, you look at old Porsches, for instance, uh, a, a contemporary minivan will start every morning is faster, is more comfortable to drive, and by any logic would be a better car for anybody. But once you drive an old Porsche, once you drive an old car, uh, you kind of get it. The all, all the clankety things and the defects become part of the things that you love. Now when it comes to old guitars, it's a little different because old guitars tend to sound better. Any musical instrument, especially wooden instruments, will improve with age. Although this is true of saxophones too, that are not made of wood, they get better the more you play them, the more you use them. Okay, now, getting to my point, this is a 68 Les Paul, and, and this is a very rare guitar. Many of you guys probably read our story, do I have a magazine, of getting Joe Walsh back his lost uh, 1959 uh, Les Paul Standard, so his burst, and that was in VG Magazine last month. It was a cover story. It was about getting back Joe Walsh. He didn't lose it. He sold it, and now he got it back. Lots of fun there. The reason guys like old guitars like that is part of the wood. They didn't make Les Pauls all through the 60s until 68 when they brought back this, the 68 Les Paul, and it had features like a one-piece neck, no volute, small headstock, uh, the logo was different, the tuners were different, the wood was older for certainly. How they put the wood, the, the neck on was different. There's a longer tenon, uh, which an extension of the neck, which gives you more gluing surface and gives you more um, of everything, tone. Uh, there's all these little details that people really started to pay attention to. And then all, that's 1968. All through the 70s, they started doing things a little different. They made the bodies sandwich bodies, they had maple necks, they were three-piece necks, and they did that for stability. They did that because mahogany was getting hard to find. Um, so uh, having bodies that are sandwiched means you could cut up mahogany, and then uh, the maple tops were always in three-piece, but really back then people would complain. They complain about, ah, oh, the headstock's too big, the logo's different, they're using these giant tuners, they have this volute. There's all this stuff that people complained about. So Gibson really was quite slow in responding to that. And the first thing they did when they came out with a, a guitar, as these vintage guitars started rising up in value, is they came out with the Heritage 80. And this is, if you look at the headstock, a Heritage 80, and sometimes that's the quickest way to tell. But you'll also notice that the headstock is quite a bit smaller. And you'll also notice this no longer has this volute, this little bump on the back of the headstock is now back to the way it was in the 50s and 68 only. After 68, 69, they started adding the volute, they started making three-piece necks. This had a one-piece body, it didn't have the laminated body. It had the two-piece top, the top was more dished. This is really the first reissue that they made in mass quantities. These are really reissues, but a lot of the 68s were made of old wood. They were actually using up parts. So um, that's what made the 68s, but to be made from the ground up, to really actually make smaller headstocks. Uh, there's a few things earlier than this, but these are the ones. And this one in particular is really clean. We got it from the original owner. It's a really nice dark cherry sunburst. Some of these are faded, some of these are tobacco, but um, they made the Heritage, and they made a Heritage that had a flame top, and one that had a quilted top and an ebony board. These tend to be favored. The neck is big, the headstock is small. It has really good resonance. Now I'm gonna put it through this car Super B, which is a hand-wired amp that we carry that is down to about two watts. And
These are all Tim Shaw pickups, and Tim Shaw was hired by Gibson to kind of bring back the sound of the old pickups. So these guitars on a lot of parameters are really neat. Older knobs, nickel bridge. There's still more details that they needed to finish up to get this, like the long tenon and that. But they really made an honest effort to do um, to do a vintage reissue, to finally reissue something close to the 59. They didn't make a Les Paul standard with two humbucking pickups until 74, 75. You really didn't see any Les Paul standards until 76. Gibson was not quick on the draw and never has been. They're kind of slow, stoic, they're all about the wood and um, this has some of the old growth Honduran mahogany. This has the two-piece top, that nice dish top where it's flat at the edges. So here is a guitar that's not even on our website. I'm going to share it with you. This is a Heritage 80 in remarkable condition. The last thing I'll say in the camera, you're going to see most of these Heritage 80s, if you ever see any for sale, they all say they broke the handle. That's the one thing they forgot to order when they ordered cases. And Gibson didn't make cases. They bought them. And they got them from luggage companies or who could ever make cases. But the handles always broke. So many of these had broken headstocks from that. Uh, this guitar was originally bought from Newt Capet here in town in 1981. It was a year old, a drummer owned it, and he just didn't play it that much. So the frets are in perfect condition, the color is great, the flame is fantastic. Get the camera up there and take a look at some of that flame as I um, reveal it in the light, and then we'll just fade to black on that.